I'm thinking something like. Hi, Pinky. Hi. Thank you for doing Hi. this. Thank yeah. you for having me. A thousand percent. Yeah. Um, so I want to start. Okay. With what made you go into your vagina cave and like start talking? Because you already had like a. Uh oh. She's there. Oh. The one that made me start. She's back there. Hey girl. So she she was uh, she we used to be work wives. Uh huh. Right. And um, on the very first day we started at the second like so I ended up I had trained her at the first job she was at my first job here in the Chicagoland area, and then we separated, and then we came back to the second time, mm -hmm. and again, we were training at the same time, like we were both new hires, mm -hmm. and she looks at me, she's like, are you, and I'm like, you look, are you, <laughs> like we do one of those things, yeah. mm -hmm. and then we figured out, okay, we know each other, <laughs> and then it was history, so then when COVID happened, like the panorama, you know, they tell you, in March, they were like, stay home. I was like, fuck yeah, no pants. I was so excited, <laughs> right? And then by the next <laughs> month, I was like, god damn, I'm talking to the same three people over and over again, one of which is 10. He has no vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> Eating all my snacks, talked about it earlier, right? <laughs> and so yeah. I kept texting her. I was like, hey, you think this is funny? You think this is funny? And she's like, I laugh. I was like, bitch, you got it. So I posted stuff. Like, I started on Facebook posting mm -hmm. random thought of the day. Uh -huh. She was like the only one that kept liking it. <laughs> yeah, Good and then man. and then afterward, she's my gothic queen, I love her. She's, she's, she's like, do this. So then, and then I was like, oh, you think I should put these on YouTube? And she was like, yes, fuck yeah, I'll watch it. I was like, done. Aww. And I was like, do you think I should start the ticking talks? She's like, yes, I'll watch it, I was like, done. Aww. So even if it was just for one person, like if yeah. I had one follower this whole time, yeah. I would've been like, cool, at least I'm making somebody laugh, yeah. right? What was that thing that like, made you say though like is this funny did you always n like know that you were you wanted to do i mean your your friends tell you oh, okay but yeah. they're just your friends you know like mm -hmm. like when your friends are when you do a fit check they're like yes girl you look great you're like are you lying <laughs> are you lying does this make me look like i'm like five months pregnant are you lying <laughs> right so when your friends tell you you don't really believe it mm -hmm. like you're just because half the time you're drunk in a backyard and you're having ladies night yeah. so you're like mm, that was aided and abetted okay <laughs> like, yeah. it wasn't yeah. bully me <laughs> but now doing this sober i'm like oh mm -hmm. that's a lot better when it's sober yeah. a lot better <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, it was her. That one friend. Huh? That what sometimes I yeah. use that one person that believes in you. Yeah, but she's regretting it now. <laughs> she regrets it now because I had to quit on her. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, because I, in order to do this full time, I had to, like, I think one or two months into the first tour, I had to, we had to make a decision as a family. Like, is mama going to continue to do the corporate life? and the mom life and the PTA life and the, and the social media life and the, to I, like, I didn't have enough hats. Mm -hmm. And I was like, something's gonna have to go. And so I was like, looks like it's corporate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I, I put my three week notice in and I did as much as I could so they, they weren't SOL, and, which is astronomical, right? Cause when you quit, everybody just shuts down as soon as you say I'm gonna quit. Mm -hmm. yes. But I didn't think about my managers and directors who are the cunts, I thought about the people that I was supporting. Mm -hmm. Like the reason yeah. why I had my job was because of all the people that would have the software issues or like the formula issue or whatever, right? right. Like mm -hmm. they're my people. And so I was worried about them and how are they gonna continue? They don't have a support system. Mm -hmm. So I had to train six people on how to do my one singular position. Wow. And it was crazy. I, and every time, every, I like scheduling meetings with everybody. And like I made sure that I was the one that told the VP of my department and I was the one that told the CEO of the company, because I knew if my director went to tell them, she would be like, like she would make it a bad story. And I was like, this is not a bad story. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to stop doing that yeah, and then pursue this and hope to God, whatever, the universe, whatever, make mm -hmm. sure it keeps going, right? Yeah. And so it's like, I knew her, she wasn't a girl's girl. She was more of like, I wanna be in the locker room. I'm like, which locker room, bitch? <laughs> Should be the one with vaginas, not the <laughs> one with dicks. Well, right? She said, "I wanted, I want to be in the locker room." Because well, that's her, that's her persona. She was always trying to be one with the male directors and VPs, and I'm awesome. just like, "Yeah, but you know how many strong females you have under you that you should be uplifting." Yes. Yeah. And she didn't, and I was like, "Good riddance." Yeah. 
And so it was perfect timing. But she cries sometimes. <laughs> She'll text me at midnight. Bitch, where are you? <laughs> In my bed. <laughs> In Dayton, Ohio. That's where I am. <laughs> don't be jealous of that, dude. Dayton, Ohio. Come on, no. <laughs> you don't know. Dayton, Ohio is a hidden jewel. Okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> but you still like, do you still feel, you drop corporate, do you still feel like you're spinning a lot of plays? Because don't you go home yeah. after your run of shows and like every show we mom yeah i go home like so we drove from dayton to chicago this morning mm-hmm. woke up at i think we left the hotel at 9 30 and we like grand theft autoed it here so we <laughs> you know and i was and yeah so we come i come home every at the day after every weekend like if i have a show the day after i'm home mm-hmm. and then however many days i can be home and then I leave the day before a show so I could get a good night's rest yeah. for the actual show the next day. Yeah. Sometimes, like in the first year, I was only, one time I was home for 36 hours. Wow. And so as the, the years progressed, like for this tour, they made sure that they, they gave me shows every other weekend. Okay. Some months are crazier than others just because mm-hmm. that's how the clubs, you know how, it, like with the clubs, you have to make sure that it's, all the pieces are falling into place. Mm-hmm. Like I tell them, I'm like, do this, this, and this. They do the best they can. Right. But I, 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 I was like, I'll do this because I love making people laugh. It's like mm-hmm. the best feeling. You know, it's the best feeling in the world. But if something happens at home, I'm going to drop that show and go home. Like if my husband says, you need to come home, one of the kids is dying or whatever. I'm Damn. like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like he you can get handle. You get those texts? <laughs> no, no. He can handle a cold, right? Like he's dad. He can handle a cold. But if he says, oh, we got into a car accident, I'd be like, bitch, do you? I'm coming home right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Right? Like, there's... Uh, and, the, and my team knows that, and they respect that, and they have never... Like, if I block stuff out on my calendar, like, I write no travel in red, and they never schedule anything in those red zones. And so, my one of You're my other... you such a handler. I know. Like... Well, because of the corporate, and then PTA, yes. you gotta... It's like <laughs> fucking... <laughs> and I have people... At, like, at my PTA best friend, she's like, Pinky! You have graduation on this day. You need to take that weekend off. I'm like, fuck, Michelle. What? God damn it. <laughs> and she's like, a couple months later, she's like, hey, did you put it on your calendar? I'm like, yes, Michelle, I did. <laughs> I will be there. But like, you know, I, I have, I'm, we're lucky enough that we have a good community yeah. at home. Like yeah. home, you know, I'm not going to say where. <laughs> but we have an amazing support system back at home where if something happens or like I need help all of my you know I call them BSM before social media friends they will <laughs> come and rally they're like do you need help what do you need do you need me to pick up this kid that kid what's going on like they rally and come and help as much as I need it and if I didn't have a good team like if I didn't have all the people that I had I wouldn't be able to do this yeah I know I know. Do you ever feel like, because I feel, I don't have kids, uh, and <laughs> that wasn't a god, that was, that was the birth control. <laughs> 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 Bless up. Um, but like, do you ever get mom guilt? All the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I never got it until I started doing, like, until I started the heavy traveling. Like, I would travel for my corporate job, but that was like maybe once or twice a year, and then it was like, oh my god, yes the bed to myself amazing right right? but then doing this all the time like there'll be moments where you know and and again but I have such an amazing support system you know from my husband to my friends to my family like if there is an important event at the high school they would all take pictures and send them to me without even me asking and I'm like Mm -hmm. this is amazing like it took it takes like women so long to to like cultivate the amount of like strong women that can help you. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do it in a fairly quick amount of time. And I just, I just love it. Which is why I do the ladies night because I have so many different friends from different avenues of life. And I just, I want them to get to know each other because I'm like, I think you're cool. I think you're cool. You guys will think you're cool. (laughs) So let's just kind of a bigger group, you know? Yeah. But I do, I, there were moments, especially with my older son at this point, because he was a senior. Yeah. And so, and the thing is, they don't schedule shit appropriately. They're like, oh, no, this is next week. I'm like, what? God damn it. I can't just drop shit, right? Like, <laughs> I found out I need to know things a year and a half in advance. And they don't have their shit together to know that, <laughs> right? And so as soon as I find stuff out, I'm always, it always goes on the Google calendar, color-coordinated, like, all that stuff. And, but, 
there there were some where I was just like, no. Like I thought there's this thing called Mr. AT that the high school does. And it's a talent show, it's goofy, mm. it's funny. And my son, my older son's like, Mom, are you gonna be home this day? And I was like, no, why? Like he doesn't give all the information at one time. <laughs> just like teenagers, they give just bits and pieces as if we're gonna be able to cobble together their whole entire brain. And I'm just like, can you just give me everything in one bubble? I don't need five, five to 10 million <laughs> bubbles that I have to read through, right? right. And so he was, tra he was pushing real hard. He was like, no, my mom cannot be here that day. We need to do it this day. And they actually listened, and so I was able to attend, and I was like, this is spectacular. I loved it. They yeah. changed the date? They changed the date. I, th I don't know if they did it for him or not, but I'm going to choose to believe that that's what they did. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I, I mean, I am lucky that I have a lot of good people at home. Yeah. But I do, there are some things that, like, I didn't get to help my older son get ready for prom. Mm -hmm. And you know, and people are like, yeah, but he's a boy. I'm like, yeah, but he's got the llama hair, okay? And so he needs help. <laughs> he's got the scruff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He looks like a fucking llama all the time. I'm sure he really appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to teach him how to use my Revlon 2-in-1. I was like, if you break this, I'm gonna steal $60 from you and I will buy a new one. <laughs> but you, you seem like you've got like a good schedule going with it. like. When you think about the future and like your dreams in this career, mm -hmm. are what do you think about that balance? Like, do you or do you feel pretty confident in that? I at this point, I just kind of take it one trip at a time. Love it. Uh, because um, if I if I if you ask me what am I going to do in five years, bitch, I don't know what I did five years ago. You asking me for the future? I don't have a magic like you know eight ball or anything like that. Right. So I just we just go from week to week. Trip to trip, event to event, kind of what's most important right now. Let's focus yeah. on that, and the rest mm -hmm. will fall into place. Ugh, I love it. That it took a, it took forty three years for me to get here. Okay, <laughs> it did not happen overnight. Well, that's I, my mind was instead of going to future. What do you want it to look like? You talk about the importance of like the community that you have, and that it takes a long time to cultivate the right people around you. Mm -hmm. I love that you said before social media friends. BSM, yeah. Uh, yep, it sounds dirty, but it's not. <laughs> No, it sounds sure. like BDSM, but there's no D. <laughs> there's no dick. Don't worry. <laughs> <There's> no dick. <laughs> but I'm curious. Can you? Is there a time in your life you look back on where you didn't have that, and where you? Yeah. Where you needed it and didn't, and then yeah, cultivate. I even. I mean, I know this happens probably in other cultures, but I can't speak for other cultures. I gotta speak right. for my own, right? Yeah. And being South Asian, like, social media is so funny right now. Because when I see posts on anything South Asian centric, it was like, oh my God, I love India. Oh my God, I love Bollywood. Their outfits are amazing. I'm like, bitch, there is more to us than just our fucking outfits, okay? Yeah. Like, the, if you, growing up, we, we, South Asians have their own mean girls and they are meaner than Regina George, okay? Yeah. Like, I am <laughs> not lying to you. They are, and so, growing up, I didn't always have the best support structure like you know yeah. you want those friends in high school middle mm -hmm. school you want those girl parents to like hang out with yeah i had maybe one or two mm -hmm. but then we lost touch after i got married because apparently they don't know what phones are it's cool whatever <laughs> <laughs> and then when i moved here you know i thought that marrying somebody who was also south asian mm -hmm. right like i made sure that i my parents wouldn't have an issue with who I was going to marry. And so I was like, oh, my God, he come, He has all these cousins, yeah. female cousins. Uh -huh. So I, I had this, like, built in I was, a little bit. Well, I was excited. Yeah. And that's not what happened. Oh. That's <laughs> not what happened. What happened? So well, I had to go and find my own people. Mm. I, had to, I had to find my own family, yeah. right? Because, like, I'm the type of person where I don't feel like I should have to chase you to be, be friends. Right. Like, if you want to be friends with me, you know where I am. You know how I speak, like, and the more you get to know me, mm -hmm. the more my true nature comes out, mm -hmm. which is weird because on social media, no one knows me. But again, when I did social media, like when I first started, I did it for my work wife who knew me, <laughs> right? So yeah. she was my audience, not everybody oh, else, not yeah. the stranger dangers. Like, it was the people that I know who are my audience, the people that I've, I've gone to dinner with or, mm -hmm. you know, we've had fun times with or ladies night in the backyard with. And so... It wasn't hard for me to be myself on social media, but when I meet new people, mm -hmm. like back then, I would be, you would think I was an introvert. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I just, I don't know what your vibe is, and I don't know if you're going to be part of my tribe, so yeah, <laughs> get the yeah. fuck out. <laughs> but it, it took a while, mm -hmm. you know, it, like I started cultivating these relationships 
when my older son, who just graduated, just turned 18, when he was in kindergarten. Yeah. And so I've just built every year, just keep adding more people, people that I'm like, yes, I resonate with you. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's have, let's continue to have a good relationship because mm -hmm. the older you get and your kids leave, what's, you need people. Yeah. Right? You need people. What about pre-kids? What'd your support look like? Just as a young person yourself. No, it was just me and my husband. It was yeah. nobody, because like I said, there wasn't, there was no interest, mm -hmm. right, in in them wanting to have the relationship with me, like all his cousins or w family friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, peace out, bitches. I don't, I don't chase anybody. Like, yeah. you shouldn't have to chase people for them to be in your life. Like, if they want to be in your life, mm -hmm. they will be in your life genuinely. And if they don't, those are the ones that fall off after a while so it sounds you know? like you've had some experiences where you have ch chased and yeah you didn't like it yeah no yeah. and i said no more uh -huh. i think it was like maybe two or three people uh -huh. throughout the course of my life and i said lesson learned bitch not gonna <laughs> do it anymore <laughs> not because i <coughs> i always approach people in the way that you know oh i see that you're sitting by yourself right like you're at work you're a new hire this is a real life situation. Mm -hmm. She can agree to this yeah. out there in the audience. <laughs> but we had a new hire, and you know she was she was outgoing. So I was like, hey, you know, let's let's see if we can become closer because everybody, <coughs> we all look for that person. We all look for the group of people to become friends with, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're an adult, it's harder. It's yeah. so much harder Truly. to make friends as an adult. Like, you need to buy cool shoes and be like, here's my shoes. Let's figure this <laughs> out. <You know? laughs> like, I can't be friends with a stiletto hoe. I just can't. <laughs> like, I'm like, how are you walking? Like, this is, did you cut your pinky toe off to walk? <laughs> right? And so, I, tr you know, I, I put myself out there and I would talk to her and I would ask about her life and all this stuff and she loved having diarrhea of the mouth and she told us everything but then I realized she's not reciprocating like she's not asking yeah. me about my life oh I hate that mm -hmm. and then she started being shady as fuck at work and I was like karma's a bitch <laughs> reverse reverse like a cha cha yeah. I got out of there so fast and then but the thing with me is I will try to be your friend but as soon as you show your true colors mm -hmm. I can flip it like a switch yeah. and just we, we are just, I will respect you as a human being at work. If you need help, I will come help you. Yeah. However, if you ask me how my weekend was, I will say fine and move on. Yeah. yeah. This is the person that you, like one of the people you felt like you were chasing and then it just didn't work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I was like, I gave you a chance to be cool, but now you're not cool, man. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted her to try to know you more. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like we would have gotten along yeah. like it wasn't just me and her but it was like a collective yeah. of like three or four women mm -hmm. you know and in women in the corporate like we we should be sticking together right because mm -hmm. they try to like elbow us out and yeah. stuff and she is not she's a good I'm, i can't say good person <laughs> she's a person <laughs> she's a person <laughs> confirmed right yeah. like i mean i should have been like i should have been like do you have any friends outside of work and as soon as she said no i should have been like peace out <laughs> but i felt when she said no i felt bad right i was like okay well maybe uh, yeah. i could be your friend because i remember what it was like mm -hmm. growing up in connecticut moving yeah. here with nobody except mm -hmm. my civic honda civic full of shit yeah right <laughs> you know you move from here to nashville and so it's the same like you try to make friends outside of your work environment but then when it doesn't work out you get a little sad mm -hmm. and then you say you know what girl no nope. pull your big girl panties on it's okay lesson learned now we move on yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to make good friends as adults it, it is. is man <laughs> i think it's so like dope that you have built that because mm -hmm. like um i was just I don't want to cry this early. Um, I was just I talking. I punch you to make no, you stop crying. No, no, I like to cry. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's cathartic. For I just her. didn't want it to be this early. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Someone signal when there's five minutes left, and then we'll cry together, ruin our makeup. <laughs> yeah. I just was talking to somebody about how like this business is very like you're with around people all the time, but it's mm -hmm. so solo. Yeah. And like yeah. I had, um, I have like two people that I feel like I can call and after a show, if they're in bed, I like lately I've just been like, damn, I'm like alone right now. No. 
Girl, you could call me. Everybody keeps saying that, but I don't want to wake you up. Well, I woke <laughs> up once somebody when that when that basalt Betty incident happened. That's what we're calling her, basalt <laughs> Betty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when that basalt Betty incident happened, I was trying to think of who I could call because I just I had so much yeah. like anxiety about it, like so much energy. And this shit happened the first ten minutes of my show, so I still had another fifty minutes to do. <laughs> I don't even know how I did it, but I did spectacular. But then I get <laughs> off and go to the green room, and I'm like hyped up, like this is pre weed. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> like and I'm like calling people. I don't care if you were sleeping. I was just calling everybody. <laughs> I called my husband. He was at a baseball game. I was like, bitch. And then I called, <laughs> <laughs> and then I called one of my other friends here. She's like, oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> you know, when someone calls you, you get terrified. You're like, oh, my God, did someone die? Right, right, right. Why did you just text me? Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, no one talks anymore. <laughs> the basalt Betty thing, I, like, I'm curious about that. It was terrifying. Yeah, girl. Like, I watched the video. There was a video. There's yeah. two. We're going to clip it together. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> See, this is kind of what I'm, I'm talking about. Because, yeah. like, I watched the video. Well, you called me, and it was, it was like, scared, but also, like, you're funny. Yeah. So it was, like, kind well, of Well, by the time I called you, I had already... It happened Wednesday, and I called you on Friday. Oh, okay. So I had already processed it. Talked it out a few times. Yeah. yeah. I had watched the video, I felt, for, like... Yeah. You know, yeah. It was scared. Scary. I yeah. was uh, like, I watched it a little bit ago. So, so they, <laughs> the venue was also recording my set for me. And so uh, like we, we all, the staff was huddled around the sound booth. Like we're all watching this. I was like, wait for me. <laughs> and then they projected it onto the screen. So we're all just <laughs> like, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> and so you could see me like, like slowly stepping back. As soon as she took one step, I did one. She took another, I did another. And I was like, if I need to run off the stage and hide in a corner, I will, because I'm wearing black and you won't see me, okay? Right. Like I was prepared. I'm, I've been doing my hot girl, tired woman walks just so I can be <laughs> fit and prepared for, th she knew, okay? So I was ready, I was ready. I wouldn't have punched her, but I would have ran away like a normal person. Does it make <laughs> you scared to go do shows? No. Oh, okay. I'm not, like, was it terrifying in the moment? Yes. If something had happened afterwards, maybe I still would be a little bit scared. However, my kind of motto is if, if you let life scare you, then you're never going to leave your house. Facts. And even yeah. then, your refrigerator can fall on you and you can die. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't know. Like, what if you have a leak on the second floor and now the tub is on top of you? Like, you have no <laughs> idea. I'm so glad you're bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> My anxiety OCD is like, I'm like <laughs> eating right now. Oh God! But you get what? I'm, like, if if I let every little thing scare me then I would never leave my house, and, and I can't do that. Like, I refuse to let somebody who was having a little bit too much fun, who didn't <laughs> know her limits, just to deter me from continuing this, because, like I said, I love making people laugh. Mm -hmm. Like, this is why I am the way I am, even when it was just with my close inner circle, right? Like, I love talking. I, I would tell stories about my mom all the time because, like, sh there's always something that she does. And I'm like, why are you like this? <laughs> like, why? Like, is it because you're brown, you know? And <laughs> it's, it is. It's because she's brown. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but, like, the older I get, the more, like, she's just, she's so janky. You know, and that's that's how this started is like I would tell my work. Well, she'd be like, oh, my God, Usha's here. I'm like, girl, let me tell you, like on her wall, like, you know, cubicles, they have like the fabric wall and then they have the window. Yeah. We would have Usha sayings up there, <laughs> like Usha sayings, the things that she says incorrectly all the time, like Gladarade. <laughs> She doesn't call it Gatorade. She calls it Gladarade. I'm Aww. like, why do you call it Gladarade? Bingo, because it makes me happy. Does she live with you? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> she is only allowed to visit and only for like two weeks maximum. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I want to no. uh, like talk about when you were saying like on social media, people talk about. Indian culture and you're like we're more than yeah our dresses and yeah mm -hmm. what do you mean by that and like do you feel like in your comedy you've tried to I don't know talk more about your culture or I in my con like in in the first year I had a lot more stories about my mom and interactions with her yeah. and then this year's the second tour I had some but not as much just because just like the the same reason why I refuse to use hashtag mom on my videos when I first started off because as soon as people find out that you're a mom, 
you're not allowed to be anything else but a mom. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm on a war path to let every single fucking mom in the world know that you are more than a mom, oh, which is yeah. going to be my Netflix special's name, okay? Nice. Be on the lookout. Yeah. We are more than a mom because as soon mm-hmm. as you stop, like, well, you never stop being a mom, but as soon yeah. as you stop being an active mom, like, my 18 year old is going to go to college. Mm-hmm. You think I'm going to fucking call him every day to see if he ate dinner? No. <laughs> no. I, like, figure your shit out. You're an adult now. Like, I'm, I, I succeeded, all right? Like, you didn't, you didn't die. You didn't murder anybody. There was no, there, there were no, like, you didn't get into mischief. Like, I did my job, you know? But what are you going to do after they leave? Yeah. Like you have, you don't have your own hobbies. You don't have your own interests. You don't like. You make everything about your child, and if that's what you want to do, that's good. But don't force that on other people, right? Like, don't force that on other moms. And so, my whole thing has always been, you're more than a mom. So I tell my stories of me being more than a mom, right? Me being yeah. more than a mom is me going out and doing stand-up comedy at the ripe old age of 43, not 24, right? Like, this is, what are you doing? You should be at home. Bitch, no. Yeah, <laughs> bitch, no. <laughs> Do you get those kind of comments? I don't, but I think it's because I, the way that I present myself is like, this is what it is. If you don't, don't like it, it, there's the door. Yeah. Like, I don't. Was but there a time where you felt like you... Where did you struggle internally with only seeing yourself as a mom, or do you feel like you were getting that from outside? Like, what made this a war path for you? Well, the f- the I, I just, I noticed in talking to all of m- my friends and stuff, you know, they're so stressed out. They're so stressed out because we're doing so much as mothers, like l- with all the different hats mm-hmm. and trying to make sure that we're doing the best that we can. Mm-hmm. and. The internet and social media doesn't make it any better. It, it's telling me what I should be doing as a mom. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what I should be doing, but what's the reality, right? Reality mm-hmm. versus expectation. Mm-hmm. And what we get on the internet is the expectation, it's, it, but we're not getting the reality. And so I love putting my picture next to an influencer's and writing reality and expectation. Because there's a lot of people who look to these people online, these influencers, like, that's like wh- I had uh, one of my cousins this past one in Perrysburg you know she just she her daughter's 13 months old I was like how are you doing and she's like oh my god nobody told me that being mom is so hard I was like who, what do you mean nobody told you are you not talking to anybody like <laughs> did you not do your fucking research <laughs> and then she starts listing all of these influencers that she follows I'm like that's your fucking problem you yeah. you're following people that have a whole team behind them right they have chefs and they have like physical trainers and they have mm-hmm. you know Ozempic and they have all this <laughs> fucking shit yeah meanwhile I have what diabetes okay <laughs> <laughs> get out of here <laughs> like like so I kept seeing you know and and I did for a while when when my two sons were younger I was like is is this all there is is there mm-hmm. is is this life like I'm just about these two children now right, like yeah. do, am I not allowed to go out with friends once a month and have dinner like I deserve a hot meal once a month mm-hmm. right <laughs> oh my god I deserve fresh <laughs> food. sounds like prison <laughs> but that's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. We we focus on making sure that everybody has eaten, right? And we tr- we mm-hmm. try. I try at least. Like let's let make a new dish. Hopefully everybody eats it. And then by the time you actually sit down, you're like, I'm tired. I'm taking a nap. Like you don't even want to eat it anymore because you're tired, right? And it's constant. Like it's it's not like um it, like food. It's just I fucking hate food. Okay, like it's. <laughs> I'm getting PTSD right now. <laughs> Let's talk about that. No, we're not talking about that. No, just, That's but it's true. For. Like, you know, you, 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 you're taught, you're conditioned by either the society that you grew up with, being South Asian, right? You, ha- you have to compromise. Pinko, you have to compromise. It's all about compromising. You have to be the bigger person. I'm like, Mom, I'm already big. I don't need to be bigger. <laughs> if I'm bigger, I will crush my husband, okay? <laughs> He's only two inches taller than me. Come on. <laughs> But we were taught that. We were taught to compromise. We were taught to, oh, well, if there's only three slices of pizza and there's four people, guess who doesn't get to eat pizza? Mom. And I'm like, mm. but, like, I love pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love cheese. Come on. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so that, that started to get me like, no, that's not fair. I feel mm. like 
let's cut up the three slices and make it somehow even for all four of us to eat yeah. you know mm -hmm. like there's a give there's a time and a place to be like no no yeah. it's okay but every time mm -hmm. i'm talking about every time like no mm -hmm. not every so i think as the years progress and as i was talking to my friends that i've acquired through over the years i realized i was like no there's more to us than this yeah. and that's why after covid i started my ladies night like i do yeah. i do an annual ladies night mm -hmm. no dick allowed <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're taking pictures, that's the only time. <laughs> or starting the fire, that's the only time. <laughs> but I mean, you know, because you need that. You need that, mm -hmm. that space where you could just be silly, you could just talk to whoever you want to talk to, you could do whatever you want to do. And even if it's just for one evening, like the fact that my friends look forward to this makes me happy oh, because yeah. they're like, oh my God. Like they'll start texting or asking when it is in like March. Mm. I'm like, bitch, it's in June. <laughs> God, you know this. Come on. <laughs> so it was it was a slow progress yeah. that I realized we deserve more than just the mom label. Mm, yeah. But culturally, I I don't I don't tackle that just because if you if I thought the mean girls, South Asian mean girls were mean in person. Mm. They are they're just as bad, if not worse, online. Really? And I'm just like why and and then I'll, I'll end up you know my algorithm will give me those videos yeah. and one will be like can you believe and then the caption is the South Asian influencer that everybody thought was amazing is actually not amazing surprise surprise I'm like bitch no one is surprised <laughs> no one is surprised like if you live that life if you're a Jersey girl you live that life like there no one is surprised and I'll write in the comments I'll be like why does this surprise you? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God, this is so rude. But, but like they're, they're taking it personally. And I'm like, well, you're taking it personally because you are a mean girl. That's why you're taking it personally. Mm -hmm. what, makes it, what makes them worse? Like they just, they, they don't have a filter when it comes to online versus in real life. They'll have a little bit of a filter. I mean like South Asian mean girls compared to, you know, Regina George. I mean, I've never met a Regina George in real life. <laughs> I made sure to stay away from those bitches. <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, it's, it, it stems from the fact that our moms, our boomer Indian moms, mm -hmm. they are notorious for pitting their daughters against each other. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, oh, oh my God, Gita auntie's daughter, she's a doctor, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm eating a sandwich right now <laughs> <laughs> because I'm fucking hungry and you made me fast for how many fucking years? Like, they, they're constantly pitting their daughters against each other and so they learn it and so now they're mean to each other and it's like, no, we're yeah. all in this together. Like, we, mm -hmm. come on, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not necessary. And I, I back away from that, you know, which is why a lot of the like, staff at clubs in the first year, they're like, you know, it's so shocking. You don't have that many Indians in your crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no joke, look at them. I'm like, are you racist? <laughs> Is that all I'm allowed to have? I want everybody. I want everybody, not yeah. just the Indians. Mm -hmm. But it's because it's it's either they're jealous or they don't know or whatever reasons they have. I don't want to know the reasons because I'm still doing me. Yeah. You know, I'm still being a successful stand-up comedian. And doing good. And being an amazing mom. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. They know how to use the air fryer, okay? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. I asked, the, I asked roommate number three, 11 years old. I was like, hey, we got to go downtown. Do you need me to make you something? You're like, do you want dinner right now? He's like, mom, it's 4.30. I'm not old. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you going to make your own chicken tendies? He's like, yeah, I know how to use an air fryer. I'm like, bitch, yeah. <laughs> Self-sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> they can do laundry and they can feed themselves and the older one can drive to the hospital. I'm done. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> you mentioned like when we went live not too long ago, like I, uh, I told you that I went to an Indian wedding yes. and my friend uh -huh. was like, oh my God, I have all these outfits for you. Like, let me just throw a bunch of outfits. Yeah. And it was one of the worst days ever mm -hmm. because every Ooh. outfit was like, eh. And then she's yeah. like, hold on, I have extra, 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 extra large. And yeah. then that one was like, ah. And, I, and then there was another yeah. Indian wedding, and she's like, let's do that all over again. No. And I was like, Here's can't the thing. wait. Here's the thing. But when, yeah. when being heavily on social media now, right? And I'm like, everybody's always fighting about size, inclusivity, and all that. And I just giggle. Because I'm like, bitch, try being Indian. 
Try being fucking Indian, okay? The, uh, like, when my mom goes to India, I have to have clothes specially made for me because they don't just have them at the store. Like, Indian girl, I call them skinny minis because they're all tiny because they're, they're mom, we, th- our moms made us all fast so that we can not gain weight. There was always a five-pound deficit that we needed to have. And I was just like, wh- what makes you think that this luscious body is not going to get a husband? I mean, there's more cushion for the pushing. Come on, man. Yeah. Like, get out of here. <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's not size inclusive. And so I've just finally, she's finally, after 43 years, mm-hmm. figured out how to get clothes made for me. I was like, bitch, I could have been so much hotter all of these years. <laughs> and now you're giving me <laughs> B- Before it was just like... I hate it. Fit into it. Yeah, I yeah. hated going to any Indian functions because the outfits were just not outfitting properly, mm-hmm. and they were so tight. And it's like when you have big titties, it, everything just pops. It, like not in a good way, mm, you know. Yeah. Because if something pops, then you got the Indian aunties be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And they're notorious for gossiping. <laughs> but then they're like, I don't talk like that. I'm like, bitch, you all talk like that. <laughs> okay, I want to, can we dip into the psychology a minute? Yeah. Because you made a statement. You said, I hate food, which is, that's a big statement to It make. is, I know. And so now I'm piecing some things together. Yeah, where you, you figured it out. About body size. That's why you're the therapist. And, <laughs> 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 um, and just the, the culture, the, the mo- I mean, I think all moms, we don't realize when we talk like what we get like the kids pick up on Mm -hmm. when you criticize yourself your kids hear it you know yeah um and even the the lack of uh, i don't know the exact statement that i read but it's almost like the the lack of being told you're beautiful yeah is harder sometimes to it's like you're missing this it's a trauma but it's a thing it's so hard you can't name it because you didn't get it versus if you just had a mom criticizing like mm-hmm. th- there's it like double downs you know nobody so going back going to that statement of nobody if you didn't have somebody to tell you that you're pretty yeah or that you're beautiful yeah you grow up not thinking that you're pretty right. and you're beautiful mm-hmm. and I wasn't told I was pretty or beautiful yeah. until I started posting on social media mm. so f- 2020 yeah and that like and it was the comments like you know how people say Uh oh don't read the comments they'll just they'll depress Mm -hmm. you i have the opposite like if i'm having a bad day i can go into any one of my videos Mm -hmm. and i can read the comments and 99 percent are positive they're either people laughing or or like i don't do makeup shit right like that's not my jam i don't know the makeup world and people like oh my god your eyes are beautiful Mm -hmm. oh my god i love your eyebrows eyebrows oh my god thank you (laughs) um (laughs) been gazing at them the whole time <laughs> <laughs> but like you know they they call out these features and mm-hmm. like you know i knew my hair was great growing up because I, that was like my pride and joy like and for a lot of indian women the mm-hmm. hair is your pride and joy right yeah. like come on who doesn't want these eyebrows you know <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <Your eyebrows. laughs> but outside and like i knew my eyes were pretty just because other people would tell me but mm-hmm. your own mom unless she's right she tells you you don't really get it from there Mm -hmm. right and so and and the whole food thing is because i always had to lose five pounds yeah i always had to lose five pounds it was constantly five pounds something's always wrong yeah like yeah 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 so and so that's why like i feel like that's why i am the way i am like that's why i'm sarcastic because in front of the family i had to project this obedient daughter Mm -hmm. right and then an older daughter at that, so basically third parent. Yeah. And then, but when I was with my friends, I was complete 180, like cussing up a storm, being sarcastic, like all of that. Like mm-hmm. I was so different. And then my then my friends would see me in front of, in like family situations, <laughs> they're like, and they're like, "Who you? the fuck is this?" <laughs> 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 like none of your goddamn business. Shut your face. <laughs> 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 We're pretending right over. now. <laughs> <laughs> But you grow up learning how to pretend really well, yeah. and then and then after a while, when the pretend becomes real life. Yeah, have you learned not to pretend? Yeah. How'd you do that? I just I s- keep reading the comments. <laughs> okay, uh, what came up when, I think that's lovely, because I know that's not the normal, like, typical experience. I mean, go in the comment section, and it, it'll stretch you out in five yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of hate in that, so I'm glad that that's what your comments are. I have a good group of people where, if I, from my husband to 
my handler. That's what we call her. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I, we don't like to call her my assistant. Well, she's my handler. She handles me. <laughs> she gets me to where I need to go <laughs> and make sure I don't go crazy when I'm high. And so <laughs> between the two of them. You don't want to be Bass all Betty, dude. <laughs> I don't want to be Bass all Betty. <laughs> no, but between the two of them, like, you know, if I happen to come across a comment mm -hmm. that is in a negative light, which I have. I'm not saying I haven't. They both do a good job. First, it started with my husband, and then progressed to her. Mm -hmm. But they both do a good job of being like, "This is this is not important. Mm -hmm. This is not real life. This is put your phone down." Like I've had my husband take my phone mm -hmm. because he like I just wanted to like fire back, right? Because I'm like, "Fuck you and your mom!" Yeah. Like I just want to fire back. <laughs> he's like, "No, don't do it!" And he'll take my phone, and walk away, and then you know I realize I shouldn't, or she'll be like, "Is it worth it?" Mm -hmm. It's not, and mm -hmm. then you know. I just delete it, and then sometimes I'll, I'll Instagram lets me do it. I pin the comment, the offensive comment, right. and I let my followers attack that person. <laughs> yeah. For 24 hours, and then I'm like, "You learned your lesson," and then I unpin it and we move on. They're like, "Oh shit, I'm blowing up." Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh shit, I fucked yeah. up. TikTok used to have that, but they took it away. I was like, "Fuck you, TikTok." Yeah. This is what I need. <laughs> I need TikTok. to pin the comments. But yeah, they they I. I have a good support system that helps with that and then also keeps me humble. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not real life. I'm like, you're right. You're right. It's not real well, life. I want to ask a little bit deeper question then. Um, <sighs> this <laughs> <laughs> is literally what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> Game on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go to these external things to try to, you, you, like you kind of said, my comment section, that's how you like, no, that that's how it started. I want to know if it's gone deeper yes. and you've been able to internalize it. That yeah. It's not always external people. No, now it's letting it, it started off as an external thing, like mm -hmm. when I first started posting, because, you know, you, it's scary when you first start posting, mm -hmm. especially if you're not from that world, which I wasn't. I was always the mom behind the camera and just posting on Facebook so that grandma can see pictures of the grandkids in Connecticut. Like, that's what I was. And then I did a complete, literally turned the phone around 180 and started recording. And in the beginning, I, was, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like what I was seeing, but I was like, well, you'll accept me or you won't. There's 8 billion people in this world. Yeah. I only need 10. You know, <laughs> like that was my outlook on it. And then I started reading the comments mm -hmm. and then the, the nice came out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, your makeup is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like drop a tutorial. I'm like, you don't want a tutorial. <laughs> <Do my makeup. laughs> like it's just and then now <laughs> when I watch my videos or I'm like, dang, I look really nice today. Aww. Like I compliment myself. Yeah. And but it also the reason I never did it is is it is stemming from the the mom situation right and i'll be like oh my god mom look i look so pretty she's like don't do that one that's not good everybody mm. they're gonna think you have big head and i'm like i i guess i have a big head i don't know <laughs> like yeah. yeah let me be proud of what i look like right yeah. i'm i'm 16 like what 16 mm -hmm. year old doesn't want her mom to hype her up right facts you facts, want her facts. to anybody like even and now i realize even my sons like when they look good or like one of one of them actually combs his hair i'm like good job bro good job <laughs> it looks spectacular <laughs> do that more yeah <laughs> do that more <laughs> so so i i do it for myself now more good yeah good good, good. what is yeah. it like now between you and your mom especially doing stand up i feel like there's not she has no idea what i'm saying <laughs> 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 she so so she had no idea what i was doing <laughs> like during the pandemic, right? Like I'm <laughs> posting these videos and then back home in Connecticut, all these aunties are coming out of the woodwork and they're, they're like, oh my God, Usha auntie, look at what Pingu is posting on the social media, on the Facebook, the instant Damn, gramming. they're ratting you out? Yeah, they're fucking ratting me out. And she didn't have a smartphone then, so she would go up to my brother and <laughs> she's like, she's like, Neil, what is Ben doing? Ben means sister in law language. Like, Neil, what is Ben doing? Why is she putting all of this out there? And she had no idea, right? And then he was, he, then he fucking got her a smartphone. <laughs> The day before she came into my house in what? June. The devil roameth like a lion, dude. What? And then texted me, and he's like, I got mom a smartphone. You have to teach her how to use it. I was like, fuck you and your mom. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and your mom. I was so mad. And like, she only wanted me to teach her the Facebook. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> like, the YouTube <laughs> and the WhatsApp. And I was like, no, if I teach you the WhatsApp, you're going to end up getting all of your money stolen by some doctor in Africa. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and so then she finally, like, you know, I teach her and then I create a TikTok account for her. What? I'm the only person she follows. <laughs> You're asking for it. No, no, no. No, she wanted to. So I was like, I, I felt, you know, like, fine, yeah. if you want to watch. So now she thinks she's my informal social media manager. No. Oh. <laughs> and she's like, Bingo, I saw your program that you put yesterday. She calls them programs, <laughs> first of all. Solid. She, yeah, she's like, Bingo, I, s- I saw the program that you put yesterday, and I don't think you should wear that jewelry that's on your head. She doesn't know they're called crowns. She calls them jewelry. Oh. That's how she says jewelry. She's like, I don't think you should wear that jewelry because that was too small and your head is too big. I was like, what? How, I like, love how these. They are amazing. <laughs> they are gorgeous. And then, and then she, and so, you know, by the time I finally got around to where they live in Connecticut, it was um, closer to the end of that first year. So like November, October, November. And she's like, Pinko, I want to come to your show. And I was like, mom, I talk about adult topics. Sex. Sex. Like I had to whisper it. <laughs> so I didn't want her to get mad at me. <laughs> and she, no joke, she's like, Pinko, I will laugh when everybody else laughs. Aww. I was like, oh yeah, show me your fake laugh. She's like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, that real? That's so not fucking real. <laughs> but she did. She laughed when everybody else laughed. <laughs> That's, did that feel supportive? It did. Okay. It did. I was like, you poor, poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about you half the time. <laughs> <laughs> so she's proud. She is. She is. Sometimes, like, she, she might not like a video, and she goes up to my brother. She's like, Neil, why is she putting this out there? It's so dirty. Mm. I'm like, Mom, I didn't even say the vagina word. <laughs> she doesn't know what downstairs kitty cat is. You know? <laughs> She doesn't know what forever PP is. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the code came from. So if she finds the videos, Damn. she'll never know what I'm talking about. That is funny. Ignorance is bliss. Yes. For her. When she does give you criticism, does it hit? Or are you like, oh, whatever? Yeah, no. Now, it depends on what criticism it is. But when it comes to social media, I'm like, you don't even know how to turn the TV on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you can't even, you don't even know about Wi-Fi. Stop, <laughs> okay? Like, yeah. she's just talking so that she has something, like, something to contribute. Mm-hmm. And I, I, like, I just mom her now. So, like, when she's talking, I'm like, oh, my God, yes. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> what did she do? I can't believe she did that. Like, I give her mom answers all the time on the phone. She hasn't picked up on it, so don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the same way that you, she didn't give you the feedback of, just around, it could be your looks, or just when you're younger. Doing this now, do you get that when she just does she ever give you any positive feedback? No, I don't. I mean, it's she. She sees the people in the audience, like when mm-hmm. she does come to shows. Mm-hmm. She so she's been to one show from the first tour, and then one show from mm-hmm. this just finished tour. Um, and so when she sees the audience members laughing, and when she sees the audience members clapping. She knows I'm doing a good job because that's a, a good indicator that I'm doing my good job, right? <laughs> right. So she's like, Bingo, good job. And then that's it. But they, like, she, because she doesn't understand it. Yeah. But she is supportive in that, you know, and whenever we do talk on the phone, she's like, Where are you going now? Oh my God, yeah. I did not want to call because you're so busy, lady. I'm like, I am mm. busy. Click. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's, that's some of the work. I know working with clients are like, mom issues are some of the biggest things that we talk about you yeah know? and for some it would be really hard to try to have a relationship with their mom at all some can't shrug it off in the way that you may be able to um, and then there's the middle ground and so it, how have you found how to have you know we call them boundaries mm-hmm. <laughs> with with people there's that are i difficult. mean listen that's um, that boundaries yeah. happen with with beige people <laughs> Not with South Asian people. <laughs> 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 how have you figured out how to have a relationship where you can be in relationship with your mom, even though I just avoidance. <laughs> There's a reason why she's in Connecticut and I'm in Chicago. No, and and uh, that's a sucky answer, right? That's kind of a boundary. <laughs> but for me, yeah, she doesn't yeah. know it is. She just thinks I'm busy. Yeah. And so th- the thing is, like, 
in recent, she was here for my older son's graduation, right? And we had my mom, we had my mother-in-law, my father, like everybody, just mm -hmm. everybody that you can think of was yeah. in the house at Your one eyes time. just like, that was New York State. <laughs> and I was like, there's so many people in the house and that was just so overwhelming. And then, you know, she's, she's the way she is, she's the way she is, and they're just, and then my mom is constantly telling, like giving me recaps of conversations that she had with other people in the house when I wasn't there. And I, and I was going crazy. <laughs> like this was not, it was not a good 10 days this last time. Mm -hmm. I almost like, did something dramatic, I don't know what, like ran away <laughs> or locked myself in my vagina cave or something. <laughs> but I've, I've learned this past year that I have to definitely vocalize what I'm feeling more. Yeah. Because I didn't do it before growing up the way I did. We yeah. internalize a lot of what we're feeling and just pro pro project that happy, happy-go-lucky, hey, hey, everything's fine. Everything is fucking fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you got crazy eyes, right? Right. But I've learned to speak up a little bit more, so like utilizing my husband a lot like I'm like oh my god you will not believe what Usha did and he's just he's I don't know how but he's just calm mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he just uh, yeah yeah I don't know yeah <laughs> I don't know <laughs> he's momming you yeah he's momming <laughs> he's gonna get more mom answers now and I'm gonna hear him. but it, he knows that I just need to get it out like once I get it out I'm done Mm -hmm. Like, it's the fact that it was in here for so long, yeah. Yeah. and it kept festering, and it kept getting more and more agitated and all that, but as soon as it's out of my mouth, I, I don't care. Like, it's, I'm done with it. I don't have any more feelings on it. We can keep talking if we do need to. You're in therapy, right? Yeah. How long have you, <laughs> 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 How long have you been in therapy? The past year. So oh. I, I, when I, after I had my s first son, I ended up with postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. So I did therapy. I, I was taking medication, which when a lot of South Asians find that out, they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, bro, it's fine. Like, let's not make a big deal about it. That way we can all talk about it yeah. and we don't feel isolated about it. Yeah. Because having a child is traumatic, not only for the human that you birthed, but also the human that birthed you. Like, mm -hmm. your body went through this whole entire change. And so like our culture is just like, oh no there's a spirit in you it's like there's not a fucking spirit in you okay <laughs> wait what yeah they just they're like oh oh my god the boot is in you like boot means a spirit like a like a dead you know what spirits are not alcohol and they <laughs> yeah i know but what are they talking about because like the child no, the the mom. Like it, so like if I Oh, if you have depression. Yeah. I thought you meant when you're pregnant. No. No, that's an alien. That's, okay. Oh, well, that I confuses was so me even more. You're depressed so a spirit is in you. Yeah, girl, no one understands it. Okay. <laughs> Not just you. Keep going, maybe I'll <laughs> yeah. catch on. No, so the only thing that we can do is teach the next generation to be better, right? Yeah. I can I can't she's Old dogs, new tricks, not happening. Right, right. Okay? And so all my focus is making sure that my boys end up becoming better boys yeah. than those fucking douche canoe Jersey boys that I grew up with. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's making sure that they are better human beings. And if I had a daughter, it's same thing. Like, I would have parented her complete 180 from how my mom parented me. Mm -hmm. Just because I, I was taking fucking notes. I was like, yes, no. The no is a lot longer. Than the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, they're constant. They, they think they add a spiritual level to everything. Yeah. And I'm like, how? You are a country based mm -hmm. on science. Like, you pride yourself on the doctors and the engineers and the pharmacists. Do you think that came from a spiritual place? That came from fucking science. <laughs> like, get real over here, right? Mm -hmm. But then, con like, they, they'll walk out of maternity wards with cotton in their ears so the spirit doesn't get in their ears. <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, she's got crazy eyes right now. <laughs> and this, the spirit is like depression. Yeah, whatever happens. The ailment. The ailment. Whoa. Yeah, they're laughing because they know. <laughs> 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 they got given cotton at when they were leaving the maternity ward. <laughs> yeah, no, it's serious. And so when I had postpartum, I was terrified because it was 18 years ago. I didn't, there was, social media was not a big thing. Yeah. All I could do was boot up my computer and see if I can find a, a group chat somewhere. I don't want to fucking do that. That's lame, you know? At least then it was. Now mm -hmm. it's like, let's find all the group chats. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and so then I, I went to, I just kind of figured it out myself. I was like, I need to go to therapy. And if therapy is not it, then I need to do the therapy and the medication. 
So then mm-hmm. I ended up on antidepressants for quite a while. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with my second son seven years later. And because I was pregnant, I like when I'm pregnant, I just stop all bad things. Like I stopped drinking caffeine, like everything they said don't do. I was like, OK, done. I'm not doing it mm-hmm. because I'm. I'm trying to make the healthiest human being possible, you know? Like, I can't fuck him up because I'm an idiot. (laughs) And I like cold cuts, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Pepe (laughs) Rone. Like, you you know? (laughs) And so then I stopped for the two, like, the year, obviously, when I was pregnant, and then I was breastfeeding. And then I started back in the workplace. And I was like, maybe I should, shouldn't I, and all that. And Listen, they make it so easy to get antidepressants now. Like, you can go to your general practitioner. Mm -hmm. They make you fill out a fucking questionnaire that has nothing to do with anything. It's just today I I woke up like this. Yesterday I was not like this, but you made me take the test today. And so now, oh, I'm depressed. (laughs) Like, I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was that easy to get drugs. All right, yeah! (laughs) You know? Yeah. And then I ended up, uh, I had to get my IUD removed. And with all that pain, I forgot to take my antidepressants. Mm. And, like two weeks went by I didn't take it so I had weaned myself off of it I was like okay I feel okay I feel okay Mm -hmm. (coughs) and then I just continued to like monitor myself Mm -hmm. I I don't think I did the best job in hindsight but it is what it is and then last year my depression came back and so I was like no we're gonna nip this in the bud we're not getting as far as I got last time Mm -hmm. like last time I got to the point where if I was in a car by myself I would be like, I could drive off of this bridge and nobody would care. Like, mm-hmm. those are the thoughts I was having, which is why mm-hmm. I ended up in therapy, because I was like, no, I yeah. kind of, I, this is not good, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, was, I was self-aware enough. And so when it came back last year, I was like, no, we're, we're, I'm going. I'm going back. So yeah. I got the, the, the soonest appointment I could, which ended up being four weeks later. And I was like, this is, this is not good, but I will do the best I can. Yeah. And now, a year later, I think I'm down to like once a month. And she's mm-hmm. like, if you need me, call me. I'm here. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, not back on the antidepressants, but I think that's where the weed comes in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and people, like, yes, it's a joke. It's funny. haha, whatever. But I would rather take a gummy if I'm anxious or take, like, a couple hits of a, a vape pen if I'm anxious versus take antidepressants. Because those the ones that I was on, and I know now, like, you should try different ones to find what works with your body. I didn't know that back then. 18 years There's ago, I was a fucking baby, you, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now, I, and I was like, the, the ones I was on were horrible. Like, it, it made me have drastic mood changes, uh, mood swings, and I was like, I don't, I don't like that I just yelled at my kid for being a kid. Like, mm-hmm. it made me feel like a worse mom, <laughs> you know? So yeah. that's where the guilt is also. <laughs> but we're better now. Good. Yeah. Thank you to plants. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are wrapping up. I want <gasps> oh. to. Going by, fa- <laughs> by fast. Yeah. I um. I want to ask. Does anybody have any questions uh, for Pinky or anybody? No? Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, we uh always ask this last question. Just what's something that lights you up outside of comedy that like makes you? Oh my God. I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. <laughs> what lights me up? Comedians are always like, uh, comedy? <laughs> I mean, what's something you like doing just for you that like feels relaxing or rejuvenating? Or We hear the term self-care, and it can be things like going to the spa, but it can also be things that take care of your spirit. I, so obviously, up uh, one of the obvious is I love getting my nails done. Mm-hmm. Always have, right? Amber. And yes. Amber. <laughs> and now that I have adult money, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Adult money is spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, so it's, and this is recent. Like before, you know, I would, I would read my literature. I would get into my little hidey hole and, and that, that brought me joy. <laughs> Who doesn't like that? You know what I mean? Like gang bangs? Come on. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Dang, ain't nobody ever had that answer, dude. <laughs> I, like <laughs> I don't know, comedy and like sex with a lot of people. <laughs> Come on, one girl, five guys, let's go, man. <laughs> it's better than two girls in a cup, at least. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in, in recent years, since COVID, because um, I didn't have a designated p- place, like now I, ha- I joke around, but I have my vagina cave now. Yeah. And that is, I have all my crafting stuff. Like I love crafting things. I like just making pretty things. Yeah. I just, now I don't have the time for it though. Right. And so I, I maybe this, in the summer I will. Um, 
like during COVID, I had started to make like these personalized notebooks, like just decorate notebooks of whatever people like. I like crafting. Yeah. And but I don't like it when other people craft with me. Yeah. Because <laughs> they get messy. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's not how you do the hot glue gun. What are you doing? <laughs> or they mix things together. I'm like, no, those are two different glitters. What are you doing? Are we still talking about gangbangs? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> thank you so much for being. Thank you for having me. It was good. Thank, yeah. Thank you guys for coming yeah. in and uh, giving your energy. Thank you were for great. Good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Um, I uh, we're gonna be outside after. Like, come say hi, please, and um, mm. stuff. And um, <laughs> we're gonna have two sheets that have QR codes. One is um, a link that links to leave the podcast a uh, good review. It's free and it just helps boost the podcast and we'd be yeah. so grateful. Uh, the other is a link to my nudes. No, I'm just kidding. It's um, <laughs> In case that you one you have bang. to find. <laughs> 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 um, no, the other links to being a subscriber to the podcast is $5 a month and you get an extra episode, two extra episodes a I'm month. Um, mm -hmm. It's where me and Melanie go behind a paywall and say things that we probably wouldn't say in public more personal oh my topics God. And yeah thoughts and feelings about yes. things and more of our personal stories yeah. exactly but i truly appreciate every one of you hi mm -hmm. it's good to see you okay mm -hmm. all of you and you um <laughs> uh, and i just really appreciate you guys thank you we'll see yeah. you out there Bye. thank you Thank you for listening to I'm Fine, It's Fine podcast. My name is Amber Autry. I'm a comedian based here in Nashville and internationally touring. You can find me on all platforms at Amber Autry Comedy. And I am Melanie Reese. I'm a trauma therapist here in Nashville. You can find me across all platforms at Trauma Therapy Nashville. We really appreciate you listening so much. And if you want to give a little extra for free, make sure you're liking, subscribing, rating, reviewing, sharing with your friends, talking about it to literally everyone you see. Because it helps so much and we're so grateful for the extra effort. And if you like what you're hearing and you want some bonus material, that includes interviews with other practitioners and the, all the juicy stuff that Amber and I talk about that doesn't go into the normal podcast. Um, we'd love to have you subscribe. You can find the link in our bio and $5 a month, you can do it.